Hello and welcome to In the Court of the Winter Nave. We're doing You Can't Do That on Stage Anymore by Frank Zappa. We're on the the, uh, the home run. We're on the homeward stretch. Um, volume 3, um, it's uh, 13 hours of, of live music spliced together from, from lots of different shows right from 69 to, to 88. Um, 13 hours worth of material altogether in the six, vo six volumes, 12 CDs. I bought them in order over the years. I've always found three uh, quite a disappointment. I can't quite explain why, because there is some fantastic stuff on there. You've got a 25 minute version of King Kong, spliced from different eras, so you know. I don't really get why it didn't didn't do it for me. Possibly expectation, because the first two parts are pretty epic, particularly part two. Um, so it certainly isn't a bad album by any means, but it doesn't, didn't hook me in for whatever reason. Um, interestingly, I, I bought one, two and three I've had for many years, um, but it, four, five and six I bought within the last couple of months whilst doing these reviews, I think perhaps when I got to about Zappa in New York and Studio Town and stuff like that, I actually ordered four, five and six. So, And I think perhaps the reason I, I, I kind of stopped at three, I always planned to get them, but I, I wasn't in any hurry to get them, because I didn't like three as much as the others, interestingly. But anyway, track one is Charlena. Charlena being on there um, is, is a little bit of a strange thing, obviously it goes right back to Chung's Revenge, re-recorded on Them or Us, uh, but this was the last concert of the 84 band, and Dweezil joined them on stage, so Dweezil's playing on this, because he's on the album, so that's pretty cool. Then we've got Bamboozle Boy Love. Um, I like Bamboozle Boy Love, I always thought that was a great song on Tinsel Town Rebellion. Uh, but it also includes a little bit of Owner of a Lonely Heart. <laughs> it's only a little bit of it, but it's quite funny, I quite like that. Track three, Lucille has messed my mind up from Joe's Garage. Is this as good as the album version? Probably not. Um, then we've got a, a good version of Advanced Romance. I've always preferred the 80s versions of Advanced Romance, and for some reason the original on Bongo Fury didn't do anything for me. Uh, but uh, those three tracks are from 80, the 84 band. So much of the, this stuff on these, this whole series is from 84, so he must have had a lot of recordings. He must have felt that the, at the time would have been very good sound quality, so obviously that's what he was using. Uh, we've then got Bobby, Bobby Brown Goes Down. Uh, now you might think, well why do you need a live version of Bobby Brown Goes Down? But this is a live version where they, they sort of went wrong. This is all, this is all about the, the, the Ike Willis and Zappa thing on stage, trying to make each other laugh. Ike adds to the, I wonder, wonder, uh, hi-ho silver! Which just basically makes the, stop, the song fall apart. The band playing and they're, they're, they're laughing so much they can't they can't play. Um, that's, that is great to hear. And into a good version of Keep It Greasy. There were better versions of Keep It Greasy earlier on. If you listen to Buffalo, one of the best things on there is, is a really fast version of Keep It Greasy. This, this from the 84 band, it, uh, it isn't quite as intense, but it's still a good version. Uh, then we've got Honey Don't Want You Want A Man Like Me, obviously from uh, Leather. Probably a better version of that, actually. That's pretty good. Then we've got In France. Which is an okay song. I think one of the most significant things on this album though is the next track, which is the live version of Drowning Witch, which apparently had to be spliced together to get the, the original album version right. Here he spliced together an 82 section and an 84 section. I imagine the 82 band played it better because it was basically the Drowning Witch tour. Uh, but that's, that's a great piece. I love Drowning Witch. I love the way it speeds up at the end. Ride My Face to Chicago. This was a song that wasn't on an album, which could have been on Demo Ross or something like that. I think he probably should have used it instead of some of the other stuff. It's mildly amusing, it's that kind of thing. Another track called Carol You Fool, that's also un it, unreleased. Uh, China in De Bushwap was something that Diva wrote. I think it was a story that Diva wrote, and he turned it into a song. Uh, that's okay. Then we got a nice live version of Joe's Garage. That's good. You should always have a live version of Joe's Garage. And Why Doesn't Hurt When I Pee, and it's a good live version of that. Again from 84. There's, mentions, there's, there's mention of a girl from Salt Lake City on that, that track, and I think uh, apparently the, there was a girl from Salt Lake City who they failed to warn people about um, who... Well, some of the band called things from. It's interesting how, how many tracks are from 84. He likes the 84 stuff. This too starts with the original Roxy Band version of Dicky Such an Asshole. As I said, this was the this was released before the Broadway the Hardware version because there was actually a sample of this. Uh, so the original version was released first. Just about 88 band versions better. But it is nice to hear uh, Napoleon singing it actually. Track two, Hands with a Hammer, written by Terry Bozio because it is a drum solo. Um, it looks like, from, from the line of notes, it, it does look like that it was uh, actually spliced together about four shows from 76 and 77, but you know, it's 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 good. Yeah, if you like drum solos, that's a good one. Uh, next we've got um, a good performance of Zootalors from 76. Can't get enough of that one, that's a great track. Uh, then we've got Society Pages, I'm a Beautiful Guy, Beauty Knows No Pain, and Charlie's Enormous Mouth. And this is actually from the You Are What You Is video. Um, and I think this stuff is so much better live. It always looks better live, that album. It's such a, it is a strange album you are, you is, but obviously an um, important moment. And the, 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 that stuff worked great live. You wouldn't think it would work great live, but it does. Um, track 8, Cocaine Decisions. I've talked about that before, obviously. It's about uh, 
idiots in the business. Uh, track nine called Nigbiz, which was played at the same concert as Cocaine Decisions, and this is the 82 band, and apparently it, there's the near right going on, there's, there's police are firing tear gas, and apparently while Ray White is trying to sing, there's another band member is actually having to wipe his eyes from the tear gas coming on the stage. Madness. But track ten, but track ten is the sort of giant mutant version of King Kong, 25 minutes long, from 71 and 82, I think. The actual main theme is the, the lounge version of King Kong. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. It's like that. Um, there is loads of improvised music in there, so that's that's fantastic. Um, he makes a point of saying that nearly all the touring bands play King Kong, but I think it, do, it does seem that Pound for the Brown on the Bus was actually played more. Um, but there you go. And the album man ends with a nice version of Cosmic Debris from '84. Surprise. A bit random, but there you go. It's not a bad album at all. It's just my own personal thing. Good album. See you next time. <laughs>